Hi artists and welcome back to my channel. My name is Margot Halleck and in today's video, we're gonna be doing another color swatching series where I take you with me as I swatch these Daniel Smith watercolor Primatech paints from this very specific set. And so I absolutely love the Primatech collection from Daniel Smith because I find the colors to be very unique. They're earthy and they're complex and they're really interesting. And from what I understand, they have geologists who are working for them who source specific pigments that are harvested from rocks and minerals and gemstones. And so the properties of these paints are very specific. So you'll find things like jade or garnet, or like this set has amethyst, for example, as one of the colors. Um, they also have hematite, which is also a type of rock. So what that does is it really creates these very unique and surprising paints that are, I find very fun to work with. So if you're interested in learning more about these, then um, keep watching because we'll dive right in. All right guys, so if you have seen a Margot swatching video before, you'll know that I like to create these special swatch cards, which I'm gonna to do today with this Daniel Smith Primatech set. So I have my mise en place, which are my, um, my watercolors, obviously, and some cards that I've pre-prepped that have all of the various names already written out at the bottom of each card. And just so you know, these are regular, um, these are cards made out of regular watercolor paper. And I just labeled them with the ballpoint pen on each one of these cards so that they're gonna match each of the tubes of paint. So let's get these cards all set up. And just so you know what it's gonna end up looking like, I have um, just some examples here. So this is what we're gonna end up doing for this, um, for this swatching video. And I really love doing it this way because it's kind of like creating little Pantone swatches. So I have a great visual guide as to every single paint that I own in my collection. So let's set this little stack of cards aside and open up the Primatech set. And I'm gonna start going, let's see, what should we start with? Rhodonite Genuine. And if I'm not pronouncing it correctly, then um, feel free to chime in since, you know, sometimes I get it wrong and I'm, I love it when you guys, you know, um, correct me and let me know exactly how to pronounce it the right way. Because after all, I'm a painter and not a linguist. So, Rhodonite Genuine, we have this um, swatch all ready to go. And I'm gonna reach for my tube and squeeze just a little amount of it on a little dish that I have here on the side. Um, and I love this dish. This is something I picked up at a flea market. Um, and I just love very fanciful and interesting plates. And that's what I use a lot of times when I'm painting. So let's get this texture going. And I can tell it's very vibrant, but also very luminescent. And rhodonite is used a lot for jewelry making. So this makes a lot of sense given what I'm seeing right now on the, on the page. And it actually reminds me a little bit of a cross between a potter's pink and a quinacridone magenta. So it kind of feels like if you were to mix the two together, you'd get something like this rhodonite genuine. Um, and I'm going to add a little bit more color, more pigment to the top of my swatch so we can see how it behaves when you build it up um, a bit more densely. And it doesn't build to be that opaque or, you know, it can get dark, but not as dark as you would with, um, or you would get with a quinacridone magenta. So let's, um, let's try to build up even more. And I'm gonna get some pigment straight out of the tube, which I rarely do, but um, to try to see how, how dense we can get it to be. And it's still very, very luminescent, even when you build it up to, to try to get thicker towards the top. Um, but all in all, a really, really elegant color, very um, vibrant. And I can imagine using this for fashion illustrations, for costuming, for florals, roses, um, carnations, things like that, or even for skin tones, if you wanted to blend that into your skin tones. So let's take a quick look and compare it to um, other pinks that I have in my range. Right here I have a potter's pink, a quinacridone magenta, and like I mentioned, it's kind of in between the two. So if I, if I put this swatch right between the two, it, it really feels like it's somewhere in the middle between these, these two colors, and, and maybe has a bit more of a red undertone to it as well. 
Okay, so let's put this swatch to the side and move on to our next color, which is Jadeite Genuine. And this color was actually suggested to me by one of my YouTube subscribers who saw one of my uh, videos about my favorite greens and suggested that I try Jadeite. So I'm really excited to, to, to try this one because the color from the swatch on the packaging looks right up my alley. So let's um, turn this little palette or dish, whatever you want to call it, to the side and, um, and pull out the Jadeite and um, get that going on my palette. So coming out of the tube, um, it looks quite dark. Um, so we're gonna see what happens when we blend in some water and it's beautiful off the bat. It has, just like the description, the, the coloration of a jade stone, um, a very deep kind of hunter green that has a gorgeous earthiness. And um, it's really just the definition of jewel tone right here. Um, and I suspect that when you water it down even more, and I was quite generous with how much paint I put onto this card to begin with, but I suspect that um, in very light washes, it would be very, very lovely as well. And the deeps are deep. Um, we get to the top and as I layer some more pigment at the top, you can see that it's just bordering on black. And I think that that this might be my favorite new green just because of how sophisticated it is and um and you know it falls along the lines of what i personally really like to look for in my greens which is um you know these very earthy and deep and natural kind of greens that are not too electric that have um, a moodiness to them that um, i find very interesting so if you're on the market for a green, let's compare it to other ones that I have in my arsenal. So I'm gonna pull out, let's see, what do we have here? I'm gonna pull out some things that are similar so that we can just compare it to other ones that are um, you know, in this similar range. So I have a Sennelier Hooker Green, a Daniel Smith Undersea Green, and a Cascade Green. And you can see how, you know, I think that it kind of falls within the lines of Actually, the Sennelier Forest Green is also quite similar, but it's unlike anything else I have in my uh, selection of, of watercolors. It really is its own thing. Also worth noting is that in typical Daniel Smith fashion, it is a granular or has a more granular quality to it. So you may or may not like that depending on how you feel about granulation. All right, so let's put all these aside and move on to our next color. And that's gonna be Amethyst Genuine. And I really love the stone amethyst. It's purple, it's glittery or shiny, more glittery than shiny. So I wanna see how this paint compares to that uh, beautiful semi-precious stone. So I squeezed it out onto the palette and just like with a jadeite, it comes out very dark. And I'm curious if once you add the water, if it's gonna maintain that darkness or if it's gonna lighten considerably or not. Okay, so let's get this texture going. And um, once I add the water, it actually does not maintain that darkness. It actually comes across as very bright and very transparent actually. And I detect a little bit of a shiny, not shininess, but some, the granulation, how do you describe this? <laughs> the granulation has sparkles in it. Um, which is really hard to describe, and it's also really hard for the camera to pick it up. And I'm gonna try as hard as I can to get um, an angle going here so you guys can see it. But um, actually it does, you can, you can build it up to be quite dark. And you can see very at the very top, um, we're getting something that looks a little bit like a dioxazine violet. Um, you know, maybe not as vibrant as that, maybe a little bit of a earthier version of that, but you can get quite dark and deep if you layer on the pigment and, and build that up, which I'm doing here at the top of this swatch. So I'm really enjoying comparing these swatches to other ones that I have, so I'm gonna keep doing that. Let me know if you like this method or not, um, if it's helpful or if you find it confusing, but I happen to think that it's, for me anyway, that it's helpful to sort of see it next to things that are comparable on either side. So I pulled out a Sennelier Dioxazine Purple, um, and I'm gonna take out something else that I find quite similar to it, but maybe has a bluer, you know, a bluer color to it, which is Daniel Smith's Moon Glow. And again, something worth noting here is that shiny or sparkliness in the granulation, which, um, you know, the camera couldn't really pick up so well, so it's really worth just checking it out for yourself and see what you think of it.
Moving right along to our next color. Um, so what card do we have next? So this is Mayan Blue Genuine. And just the name itself evokes, you know, a whole sense of place and, you know, even like Mayan architecture or wall paintings. Um, but from what I can see, it looks kind of like a cross between an indigo and maybe a turquoise or some, there's definitely some green in there, which makes me think of um, an ocean color. So let's get this onto our swatch and it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, very vibrant, very saturated, um, and makes me think of, you know, a tropical ocean um, or just these crystalline waters that you might find in Mexico. Again, sort of referencing, I'm playing off the name here, but it's luminous, it's bright, it's sophisticated, and has a hint of earthiness. So um, I've noticed with a lot of Daniel Smith colors, you rarely get something that's very electric and very primary in color. And that makes them very easy to work with because um, they, they tend to work very well with other colors um, and, uh, and look very natural. So that's the case here as well. It doesn't build to be too dark, um, but that's okay too. I think it's a, a color that probably I would use in a more watered down wash. So let's compare it to other colors that I have. Um, so I'm gonna pull out, let's see. Um, it definitely has a lot of green to it. And that becomes evident when I'm comparing it to like a cerulean or even an ultramarine. I'm getting closer with a phthalo turquoise right here, which was Windsor and Newton's. And it has some of the grayness or that earthiness that you would find in a Payne's gray. Um, this also looks quite similar, which is Daniel Smith's Lunar Blue. Although I will say that Mayan Blue has a little bit more of that phthalo turquoise coloration, but with the earthiness that you would get from a Lunar Blue or a Payne's gray. So I think that covers it for the Mayan Blue Genuine. We're going to move on to our next color in the set, which is Hematite. So let's pull out the Hematite card and, um, and rotate this palette so we have a little bit more room to apply our color to. And the word hematite is actually derived from a Greek origin, which actually hema means blood. And so hematite means bloodstone. So um, you might expect it to be red, but actually the reason why I guess the, the name came to be is because the mineral itself is rich in iron, kind of like blood. So not to get too gory or anything, it's just to give you a little history on how the name of this special stone came to be. So um, applying it to the paper, it is extremely granulating. And the lighter instances of this color are kind of like a dove gray. It's a warm gray with a, a reddish undertone to it. And these kinds of neutrals are among my favorites when they have a little bit of an undertone to them so that they don't deaden your painting and suck the life out of the colors. So that's um, our hematite swatch. And I'm going to compare it to some other colors that I have, um, one of them being lunar black, which has a cool cooler quality to it um, versus let's say uh, sepia which is obviously more brown and warmer so I would say the hematite kind of sits in between these two in terms of the colors that I already have so not too cool not too warm somewhere in the middle like as if we were to mix the lunar black with the sepia all right we're down to our last color in this set and that is piemontite I hope I'm saying that right genuine this mineral actually originates from Italy, which I assume is probably where they harvest or, or mine this particular stone. And just like with the rest of the Primatech colors, the actual stone itself is ground and mixed into the paint itself, which is so cool when you think about it. All right, so let's um, get our water going and see what happens when we um, activate the paint. It looks a little bit reddish, reddish brown to me with maybe a, a bit of a violet. Um, no, more like a burgundy. <laughs> so it looks like a burgundy or wine color, very beautiful color. Um, and I could see this being perfect for landscapes in the fall. So I'm thinking harvest colors, um, tree trunks, uh, autumn leaves, baskets, wicker, things like that. If you are looking for a really beautiful warm um, brown, um, or burgundy color, this would be just beautiful. For myself, I could see this also working really nicely for, you know, deeper, warmer skin tones. So whether it's adding it to, you know, a beigey kind of color to warm it up or using it just as is really with maybe a little bit of a sepia or something to create a nice, deep, rich um, skin tone. 
So let's compare it to some of the other swatches that I have that are in the similar vein. So I have Winsor Newton's Indian Red, which is warmer and redder. And I have a Van Dyck Brown, which is obviously deeper. So it really has its own personality compared to a lot of the other browns. It, um, you know, feels very toasty and warm um, and red, but with a slight, you know, I think I was right with a slight hint of a violet to it as well. And that becomes way more evident when you start to compare it to other browns. So yes, it definitely has a little bit of a violet or mauve kind of hint to it, which I think is absolutely lovely. So let's recap real quick and just go over all of these colors so that you can take one last look now that all the swatches have dried. So we have a Rhodonite Genuine, which is a rosy, you know, magenta-y pink, very vivid and bright. Then we have a Jadeite Genuine, which is the color of a green jade, deep and hunter green. Um, and very complex with a little bit of earthiness to it. Then we have Amethyst Genuine, which is a muted purple. It has a granulation to it, which shimmers a little bit. Then we have Mayan Blue Genuine, which is a gorgeous azure blue meets indigo, which you might find in the oceans on a tropical resort. Um, then we have hematite, which is a warm blend between a pebble and alabaster, um, kind of like a dove gray as well. And then finally, Piemontite Genuine, which is like an autumn harvest color on an autumn leaf or the feather of a pheasant. So that pretty much wraps it up for the set of Daniel Smith watercolor Primatec colors. So I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe you might be interested in picking up one of these or um, even just trying one of their, their colors from the Prima Tech collection because I, I really do find them to be very interesting. So as always, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and to subscribe because it helps me with being able to grow this channel and create more awesome um, art content and videos for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.